Hi guys! So, following a very brief technical hiccup, um, basically Facebook does not allow you to stream music even though you've bought it. My mistake, I know for future reference. So, let's get this underway a little bit um, quicker. Obviously, I may go up until 9 o'clock now um, instead of quarter two just to get all of the content in. I will very quickly just check with my trusty friend. Is it working? And see if it is online. It says it's live, it's recording, it's got my slides up, so it Yay. should be. Haha, -ha. hi Lena! <laughs> so let's get this underway, shall we? Apologies for the delay. Um, I will be on time a bit better tomorrow. I started the live at quarter two, to believe it or not. But hey, that what happens when you set it up this way. So I'll try a different way tomorrow. So anyway, this week we are looking at mindset. So today we are going to look at the introduction and how our mind works. Tomorrow we'll look at the laws of the universe, which are absolutely essential if we are going to reach our success. Um, and our full potential in our lives. Um, we can't work in harmony something if we don't know what it is. So I'll go into those tomorrow. Wednesday, we're going to just talk about how your mindset can work for you. Thursday, day four, we're going to look at the knowing doing gap and how to be grateful for everything. And I mean everything. We can be grateful for the negatives as well as the positives. And I'll explain that on Thursday. And then Friday, day five, we will look at a summary and a quick recap. I will go into what the free gift is about and where you can get some further information. So on that note, let's have a look at today's agenda. So I'm going to start with what are we? Then I'm going to go into our conscious mind versus our subconscious mind. Don't worry, all of this will make sense um, very, very shortly. Then I'm going to look at where our body fits in. And then how the stick person graphic, which was developed in 1934, helps with all of this understanding. And then at the very end, if we have time, I'll go into a very quick introduction on the laws of the universe. So let's get going. So what are we? Homo sapien, human being, person, people, ape descendants. Okay, but we are our brain. And we are not our body. We are actually, according to all the research and about 100 plus years of research and study that were done by Bob Proctor and his mentors, so Earl Nightingale, Ray Stanford, Leland Bell van der Waal, and before that, Napoleon Hill, okay, they have all said that we are not our body. We are actually a spiritual being in a physical body. Now, stay with me. It's an attention grab. But this isn't anything to do with religion, um, ideals or opinions. I personally am an atheist. I believe there is something there. Well, agnostic, I suppose, is the actual correct term. There's something there, but I don't know what. I have friends who are devout Christian, devout Muslim. Um, hundreds of people around the world follow religions. But this topic is something that both science and religion agree on. So let's take a look. So our mind is the control switch that controls absolutely everything we do. Our brain is the electrical switching station. So our mind controls the electrical signals. The electrical signals then control the body and we get the manifestation of the electrical signals. So our mind is the control, sends a signal to the brain. The brain sends the signal to the body. Action is created. So our conscious mind, our thinking mind, our educated mind, it's where we receive all our sensory inputs. We can see, we can hear, we can smell, taste and touch. We can think with our conscious mind. Thinking isn't just mental activity, actual proper thinking. We can choose. We can work in the present and past tense. So we can bring up memories. We can live in the past if we so choose. I'll go more into that in a minute. And our conscious mind also has free will. It's also the home of our higher faculties. So we have our willpower. So people say you've got to have really strong willpower. But will is actually focus. The will allows us to focus on one thing if we choose to. And one thing only. Now, Bob Proctor, one of my mentors, said the best way to def like to hone the will 
is to put a little pencil dot on the wall opposite your favourite chair or light a candle and then just stare at it. Either stare at the candle, stare at the dot and just stare at it for as long as you can. And as soon as your mind starts to wander off, bring it straight back to the little dot. It's also one of the techniques that they use in meditation. So I, for example, I use Headspace. Um, and within Headspace, it says, if the mind wanders off while you're trying to meditate, don't worry. Just say, no, nope, that's thinking. And then bring it back to um, something that you're focusing on. So meditation is usually your breath. Bob Proctor says to use a dot on the wall, anything like that. We also have our perception, which is how we see the world. So something can happen um, and one person will see it very, very differently to another. The best way I explain this um, to children, especially, is think of the number six. If you write a six on the floor in front of you and somebody stands opposite you, they don't see a six, they see a nine. You're both right. And if you swap places, you will see a nine and your friend will see a six. You're both right. But you've given very different answers. And that's a very, very good example of how our perception um, works. It's like our point of view. And we can change our point of view. It's not fixed. We can get new information and we can change it. We also have our memory as one of our higher faculties. And every single one of us is born with a perfect memory may not feel like that sometimes. Um, some of us think that we're very forgetful, but that can be trained. There are so many books available that you can buy and read um, and study and anything else like that, where you can actually hone and train your memory. Next up is imagination. Very favourite quote of mine that I've heard Bob say so many times. You, if you can create it in your mind, so if you can imagine yourself doing something or having something, so if you can imagine you having something, you can create it. You can hold it in your hand. If you can't imagine it, it's because you physically can't do it. So if you can imagine yourself, um, I don't know, skydiving, for example, then you can do it. If you can imagine your bank account with a million pounds in it, then it's doable. You just have to take the actions. But that's something for another lesson. We also have our intuition. It's kind of like, some people say it's like a sixth sense, but that's not quite right. Our, our intuition is how we read other people. So if you're um, speaking to a friend, for example, you can kind of pick up if they're not feeling right. You just get a feeling. They can say they're absolutely fine, but you can get a feeling that actually hmm, something's not quite right. Or somebody could look really, really down in the dumps and be trying to hide an excitement and you can read that excitement energy. And then last but not least of our higher faculties, we have reason. So our reasoning factor or a faculty even is our ability to kind of play with an idea. Uh, we reason with it. We think up all the positives and the negatives and then we make our decision. We also then have our subconscious mind. The subconscious is our emotional mind. It's where all our feelings are. But it has no concept of time. It can't judge. It's completely subjective, which means that it has to accept absolutely anything and everything that the conscious mind gives it. So if you are sitting in a quiet place in a nice comfy chair and you are imagining yourself somewhere else, you can then impress that feeling on your subconscious by really feeling how that person is feeling. So you are sitting on a really nice hot beach. You've got a million pounds in your bank account. You can feel the sand between your toes. You can feel the heat of the sun. You could be sitting in a freezing cold attic or sofa surfing. But if you can take your imagination to that beach, you can imagine that million pound in your bank account. You can feel the, the warmth of the sun. Your subconscious mind, your feelings, doesn't know that that's not real. It cannot tell the difference between real and imagined. So if you spend at least a few minutes every single day just imagining your goal, your subconscious mind will believe that that is already true and it will act and do everything that it needs to do to get there but more on that later. So it can also only work in the present tense. It only works here and now. 
and it is where our paradigm is located. I'll leave that with you for just a sec while I just see if there are any messages come through. It's working. No, don't, no, good. Okay, so our paradigm. A paradigm, it's a multitude of habits that control your habitual behavior. And 95% of our behavior is habitual. Habitual means we do it automatically. We don't have to think about it. We put our left sock on before our right sock. We look both ways before crossing the road, if that's what you've been taught to do. We breathe. That's kind of a habit, I suppose. And also we have our belief systems. So our paradigms are actually based on what we believe. And most of your beliefs aren't originated by you. They're passed down by your families, your culture, your friends, the environment that you're brought up in. So some people might have been brought up to think that wearing buttons on clothing is not done. It's just, it's against, it's no, it's sinful. We do not wear buttons. So as you get older, if you end up having to wear something with buttons on, you will automatically feel really uncomfortable, like it's wrong. You don't know why it's wrong, but deep down inside you, at some point, you were told that wearing buttons on your clothing is wrong. So your paradigm makes you uncomfortable until you take the buttoned thing off. But you can change your beliefs. And I will drop a, um, a, a link to a blog post that I've done into the um, into the group later on as a follow-up from this to show you that you can actually change your beliefs. Just because that's something you've always believed doesn't matter, you can change it if it no longer serves you. Your paradigm is also where your self-image is. So your beliefs kind of create your self-image. If you've been brought up to believe that you're worthless because the people around you were a little bit mean, shall we say, or you were bullied as a child, um, you will believe that you're just no good. And that's wrong because you are perfect. Every single one of us deep down inside is perfect. We may not be there right yet. We may not be able to express it, but deep down inside us is pure perfection. So our self-image is based on our beliefs and how we see ourselves. And again, we can change our self-image. We can use affirmations and things like that, but that is something for another session. We're just going into the basics today of how our mind works. Paradigms are always ba also based on our values, similar to beliefs. Um, so values such as um, opening doors for other people um, or how we treat and behave around other people. They're also based on our memories. So as I said, the conscious mind can work in past and present tense. So our memories make up quite a big part of our paradigm. We remember something that happened and how we reacted to it. And that is how we react going forward. It's our behavior. It's also where our mindset is. So our mindset, how we see the world, is actually set by our paradigm, which is quite tricky because our paradigms are so deep seated that sometimes trying to change them for a new one is quite difficult. But that is what we are going to discuss tomorrow. Today I want to go into this next little bit. So the body, it's simply an instrument of the mind. As I said before, we are spiritual beings and this thing, our body, is our spiritual vehicle. It is just what houses our spirit, so our mind, and our mind, our spiritual side of us, controls our body through the electrical signals in our brain. Confused yet? Let's have a look at it another way. So, as I mentioned at the start, in 1934, there was a, a doctor called Thurman Fleet, and he realised that the healing arts would only ever look at the symptoms to cure people's problems. And nine times out of ten, the problems didn't really get any better. Their symptoms went away, but the cause of the symptoms didn't. And he realised that human beings are very visual beings. We work in pictures. We need an image. And what he did was create the stick person. So instead of just treating the symptom, the thing that they could see, so say an ulcer in the mouth, they treated the ulcer, but the ulcers kept coming back. 
or um, eczema on the skin, for example, or any of the other diseases and things that are caused or can be caused by stress and our bodily functions and things like that, our reaction to things, can all actually be caused by the brain or by the mind. So what he did was he created the stick person. And it is basically two circles. So this is the first circle. The first circle is split into half. This is our mind. It represents our mind. Top half is conscious mind. So our educated mind, our thinking mind, where all our um, higher faculties are. And the bottom circle is our subconscious mind, our emotional mind. Below that is another little circle. And this is the body. So a little stick in the middle for the neck, little arms, little legs. Stick person. And this is a very, very, very basic um, image of the human. So he's trying to, trying to show that this is a visual repre representation. So when you're trying to heal someone, as doctors were when he would designed this, and still are today, obviously, this gave the doctors something visual to work with. Now, in the top of the conscious mind, we also have our little sensory inputs, little antennas. We can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Now, we can use this to explain how our mind works. Okay, so most of us, we look at our results, we look at where we are, we look at our bank account, we look at our job, we look at our friends, our surroundings, how people make us feel, and that creates our thoughts. Whatever we think about, as I said before, when you're doing your imagination or imagining yourself on the beach, your thinking is then impressed on the subconscious, which creates your feelings. So if your results are negative and you're not where you want to be and you're not happy, and maybe you've gone for that promotion at work or something like that, or you've got a sales target to hit and you're really just, you're nowhere near it. You're not hitting it at all. You look at that and you think, oh, well, I'm failing. What can I do? You, you start to get quite upset. That creates your feelings. This we need to stop. What we actually need to do is focus on our thoughts first. Because our thoughts, everything we think, controls our feelings. What we feel then translates into a vibration in our body. So our bodies are we are literally vibrating. You can look at your hand and there is enough potential energy in that hand to light your whole entire house for over a week, just in that hand. Look at the walls around you. Everything is vibrating, but it's vibrating in such a high frequency that you cannot see it moving. Piece of paper vibrates in a certain frequency and that's what makes it paper. My pen is vibrating at the frequency of pen and that's how the universe knows it's a pen so whatever we think about creates our feelings which creates our vibration so if we're thinking like negative thoughts for example we're going to be feeling pretty crappy and we might be thinking these negative thoughts based on looking at our results but our feelings create our vibration our vibration is what creates the actions that we do so if we're got a really low um, vibration, we're thinking pretty rubbish thoughts, we're feeling really bad, our vibration is really low, we're putting out really negative energy to the universe. On the opposite side of that, if we're thinking positive, we're happy, we're go get it, it's like, yes, everything's amazing, you're feeling great, your vibration is completely positive, so you're putting out positive energy into the universe. Whatever you put out, the universe sends back in an equal and opposite reaction. Now, this action and reaction is what creates your circumstances, your conditions and your environment. Now, as I said previously, most of us look at our results, our conditions, our circumstances, our environment, and we allow that to control our thinking. But if you keep thinking that, it will never change. But if we can have that really subtle mindset shift to only ever think about the good, think about where we want to go, think about our goal, get really emotionally involved in that goal that brings our feelings up, we feel so much better about ourselves, we give out a good vibration, we give out good actions, the universe returns that good vibration and our circumstances, our conditions, our environment and our results will change.
Maybe not overnight, as I'll explain tomorrow with the law of gender. There is a gestation period for everything. But basically, anything that you are thinking creates your feelings, creates your vibration, creates the action your body does. The universe then reacts to it. Universe, like subconscious mind, is completely subjective. It doesn't care what you give it. It will give it right back. So if you give out bad energy, you're going to get it back. Perfect example. Any of you drivers, road rage. It's always great, isn't it? You have got up on the wrong side of the bed. You're in a really, really rubbish thing. You've got a big meeting today. You're feeling really agitated as it is. You stub your toe on the corner of the bed. You spill your coffee down your trousers. You need to get changed again. And then you get in your car and you drive. And you're already full of all this pent up negative energy. And what happens? Every single driver possible cuts you up. Or you think they cut you up. And every single traffic light turns red. You are giving out negative energy, you are getting it back. Those drivers that have cut you up, they, have, they haven't they have done it deliberately. They haven't done it, oh, he's in a bad mood, I can cut him up. No, it doesn't work like that. But it is your perception of that day because you are feeling so down and so rubbish. Okay, so let's move on. So how does this help us? As I said, if we have a negative mindset, we are thinking negative thoughts. This creates worry, doubt and fear. And you know what that feels like when you're worried, when you're doubting things, when you're scared. You get that horrible feeling in the pit of your stomach and you just, you're on edge. You don't know what it is, but you're just on edge. It causes anxiety. We as humans suppress the anxiety. Oh, we can't, we can't show that we're anxious. What will people think? That is something that's getting better. Mental health awareness is much, much, much better than when Bob Proctor first put these ideas out there within one of his big programs and most of his programs that he um, sells and markets around the world. But at the time that these ideas were put across, and I suppose it is still sort of not the done thing to tell everyone how you're feeling. It's not fully accepted yet. So we suppress it. That suppression turns to depression. And depression is basically anger turned inwards. You're feeling so rubbish and you can't quite work out why. You're feeling anxious, you're suppressing it, you're keeping all those horrible feelings inside. You're getting depressed and your body goes into dis-ease. Not disease, dis-ease. Your stress starts. Um, depression, which is obviously the name for that sort of thing. The stress um, it can cause ulcers, it can cause stomach bugs, butterflies that are so, so gigantuanly huge because you're so worried about something can make you feel physically sick. The whole body is in dis-ease. But one of the laws of the universe is the law of opposites. So all of this, yes, is very negative. But if you can have a very simple mindset shift to find the good, and the opposite to worry, doubt and fear and your, is your positive thoughts and is knowledge and understanding. So just by being on this stream or watching it on the replay, hi if you're watching it on the replay, you can see now that actually just shifting your mindset to one of slightly more positive, looking for that good. So if we go back to that example, you've got up on the wrong side of bed, you've stubbed your toe, you've spilt your coffee. Just stopping at that point, taking a breath and finding something that you're grateful for, something that's good. You woke up today. Maybe the sun's shining. You can hear birds outside. Anything, t one tiny, tiny little thing can instantly switch your mind over to a positive mindset. And then, as I said, as you understand it and as you gain the knowledge, instead of going through the anxiety, you go into faith. Not faith as in religion, like I said before, but a pure belief that the good is coming. So you go back to thinking about your goal. You go back to thinking about what it is that you want, where you want to be. And you believe it with all of your heart and all of your mind and everything else. That faith creates a feeling of well-being. You're putting yourself in a positive vibration. So your well-being goes up. You express this because you can't help it. Anxiety, we suppress. We hide it. 
when we're feeling really good, we go out and we shout about it. Who have you, have you ever met somebody who you've said, oh, how are you today? Yeah, I'm feeling really, really, really good. They don't say it like that. They're like, yes, I feel amazing. I'm awesome. I'm on top of the world. This creates your body at ease. So let's compare these two briefly. So you've got your negative, worry, doubt and fear, anxiety, suppression, depression, dis-ease versus your positive. Positive thoughts, knowledge and understanding wipe out that worry, doubt and fear. Instead of anxiety, you get a feeling of faith. There's a deep set belief that everything you are working for is for the greater good. You will get to your goal. You are then either suppressing your anxiety or you're expressing your well-being. And then you're either in disease or at ease. And it really is that simple, but it is incredibly hard. And I'll go into some tips across this week about how we can flip over from negative to positive. So we become what we think about all day long. Just to hammer home that last point again, we become what we think about all day long. So if we're thinking negative, we're going to get negative. We're going to become negative. Anything we try and do is going to fail. We think positive. We're in a good vibration. We attract that good vibration to us. It's the law of attraction, which isn't actually a major law. It's a secondary law. It is secondary to the law of vibration. And as the quote here says from Proctor Gallagher Institute, everything vibrates, nothing rests. Like energy attracts like energy. As I said, our bodies are in constant vibration. We are in a constant ocean of motion. We never stop moving. Even when we're asleep, our bodies at the molecular level are vibrating. They never stop moving. And whatever they're vibrating with is what they attract to them. So if your vibration is good, because you've got positive mindset, things are going well, the world is your friend, everything is perfect, you will attract like energy to you. And if anything negative comes up, you're able to kind of go, no, I don't accept that. If you're feeling rubbish, you're in a negative vibration, everything feels like it's going to go wrong. You've probably had those days. I know I definitely have. So basically what we think is what we become. And going back to that point a little bit, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, so what we think is what we feel, which is what we vibrate, which is what we put out. That creates our actions, which causes a reaction from the universe, creates our circumstances, our conditions and our environment. Not the other way around. We cannot keep focusing on negative results that we have. Yes, things are maybe a bit rubbish at the moment. If you're a salesman and you're at the bottom of the pile, you're not making many sales. Focus on that. You will not get any sales. They will not come through. But if you can flip your mindset to go, hmm, well, that was today. Tomorrow is a new day. Absolutely new day. Yesterday, I can't do anything about. I've seen the film Kung Fu Panda. One of my favourite quotes of all time is Master Ugwe when he says, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. All we have is today, which is a gift, which is why it's called the present. We can't change yesterday, so we shouldn't try. Learn from the mistakes, yes, but don't dwell on it. We can't predict what will happen tomorrow. It's the future. It's a complete mystery. No idea what's going to happen tomorrow. All we have is right now. So anything you choose to do right now will impact tomorrow. But what you choose to do right now must be based on right now, not based on what happened yesterday. So yeah, yesterday you didn't make any sales. Um, you stubbed your toe. You crashed the car. It happens. It was a bad day. It's in the past. You can't do anything about it. So don't try. Don't focus on it. All you have is right now. Take a breath. Focus your mind on where you want to go, on your goal, and then move forward. Take the actions that are needed. So in summary, we have covered what are we? So we've said we are a spiritual being living in a physical body. We have a mind that is the control, the control switches. 
that control the electrical impulses that go into our brain. The impulses are then sent round our body. So the electrical impulses allow me to lift my arms up or to scratch my face or to swoosh my hair, to walk, to drink, to do whatever we need it to do. So what we think in our mind, in our conscious mind, as our little stick person said, is then impressed onto our subconscious mind. And that's how we feel. So if we think, oh, today's rubbish, it's going to go wrong, I've got a big meeting, the kids are pulling my hair out, I'm just, ugh, we're going to feel pretty crappy. But if we can find the one thing that's good in that situation, we can flip and turn it all around. And as I said, this image was created by Dr. Thurman Fleet in 1934 to help the healing arts focus on holistic healing. So whole body. They were treating the symptoms of ulcers and stomach bugs and things like that, not caused by eating bad food, but like caused by anxiety and depression. But they weren't treating the cause, the mind. They weren't treating the stress that causes the ulcers. We've also looked at where our body fits in. So our body is basically an instrument of our mind. It does what the mind tells us to. And I don't know about you, but I always believed that my body had a mind of its own. And since learning all of this and going through all of these programs and this information, I've actually found that my body doesn't have a mind of its own. It's controlled by my paradigm. And my paradigm is the little group of habits that I have, that I've been brought up with, that tells it to do certain things without me realizing but when you actually stop and you wait think wait hang on a minute and analyze why certain things happened they're based on your beliefs and your values it doesn't have to be that way a big belief change that i've had recently is you probably know the one you're told all the way through from when you're really small get a good education in order to get a good job to have a good life we don't need to have a good education to get good grades, to get the piece of paper. Not anymore. The world we live in now, if you look at the, the likes of your Elon Musks and the big name people, the people that are kind of really, really rich, heck, the 16-year-old millionaires that are on YouTube, they haven't even finished their education yet. A lot of high school dropouts actually go on to be more successful than their straight A students because they are using what they know instead of just storing it and not doing anything with it. And that's the key to this all, this information. You have to apply what you know. And that is what we'll cover on Thursday with the knowing doing gap. We know how to do so much, but many of us don't do it. And I'll go into why. Okay, we've also had a look at our little stick person. And I personally, if you can see that as an upside down, I had it tattooed on my wrist to remind me what I think is what I feel is the results that I get. So when I'm feeling crappy or I notice that things aren't going as well as I'd like around me, I look down, I check my wrist, I go, no, 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 no. What I think is what I get. What I think about is what I become. And then I find a way to snap out of it. And I'll go into that more tomorrow's session. Okay, we were then had a very brief introduction to the laws of the universe. We touched on the law of vibration, which is um, the main primary law to the law of attraction. What you put out with your vibration is what you attract to yourself. Like energy attracts like energy. So, homework. You thought you were getting off scot-free. Sorry, I'm a teacher. And to be fair, repetition with this kind of information is key. You can sit and watch a presentation like this and you can go, huh, yeah, that makes all sense. Ten minutes later, it's gone. I'm guilty of that. When I first started learning this, I would sit and I'd listen to it. Um, sometimes I'd be doing something else. Sometimes I'd be making notes. But I wasn't, impl I wasn't applying what I was learning. So... I'm going to do a session of homework for each of these sessions, a session of homework, a homework um, task for you to do for each of these. They're going to be quite simple, but they're just going to help you to kind of implement what you have learned. 
So it's a two part homework tonight. It is draw the stick person diagram with labels and I will put um, a screenshot of it in the group after the stream has finished. Um, and then I want you to explain it to somebody else. Could be anyone, could be a pet dog, could be a partner, could be a kids, could be a friend, could be a complete stranger you see in a coffee shop. Don't mind who, but we don't know how well we understand something until we try and explain it to somebody else. So if you can draw that stick person diagram, you can label it and you can explain it to someone else, it will stick better in your mind. And then part two, I would like you to share in the group any aha moments from today's session. Something that's just kind of clicked or something that you didn't really understand or um, something that has made you think about a situation in a different way. Okay, so that's your homework tonight. I hope to see some of it in the um, in the group, either on the event page or in the main um, Think Like a Winner or Become One group. And then just a introduction to tomorrow. So our agenda for tomorrow will be looking at these laws of the universe. There are quite a few more, but these are the ones that were listed by Wallace D. Wattles in his book, The Science of Getting Rich, which is a brilliant book. Um, and also has been created into a, um, a self-study learning seminar things, kind of recorded audios and a workbook, which is really, really good, um, done by the Proctor Gallagher Institute. I'll go into that again tomorrow. But the laws that we will cover tomorrow are the law of vibration, attraction. We'll cover it briefly like we have today. Um, the law of polarity, opposites. For every good, there must be an equal and opposite bad. Again, we'll go into that tomorrow. The law of perpetual transmutation. I'll leave that one with you. We'll go into it tomorrow. The law of relativity. Good old Isaac Newton and all the old scientists created that or created our awareness of it and never created it. The law of rhythm. The law of cause and effect. And the law of gender, which I touched on briefly this evening. Um, we are coming up to five to nine, so I will um, thank you for joining. Um, I do welcome your feedback. Obviously, this is my first live event. If I have spoken too quickly, please let me know. If I've spoken too slowly, please let me know. If you want more examples, um, more interaction, please let me know, and I'll see if I can work out how to do that. Um, I will just say that I created this presentation using a software called Presenter, um, which you can get some more information on by visiting my website against that link that is at the bottom of your screen. If you want to get in touch or follow me on any social media, all of my social posts are on the side of your screen. I suppose I should have probably said that at the beginning. I will try and remember to do that tomorrow, but I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. I always welcome constructive criticism, constructive being the key word, which means basically don't say it was rubbish. It could have been rubbish. That's your opinion. I'm open to it. But tell me why. Tell me how I can improve on it. I know we started a little bit late today, but I am mindful of the fact that I said these would go for 45 minutes, which would mean that it should have finished 10 minutes ago. Um, I will do the full 45 minutes tomorrow. And I will make sure that it starts a little bit more on time. I know what the problem was tonight, so I can fix it ready for tomorrow. So I hope this has been helpful to you. The reply, the replay will go into the group. I have recorded it as well, so I'm going to post it up on my YouTube channel. Link down there. Please feel free to subscribe, like, follow, all of that good stuff. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow evening. So thank you very much and have a great one. Bye-bye.